All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to the Go for CEO channel where we teach you, you know, great stories. You know, you start to listen to these types of people that are CEO mindset. You know, they're driven by mindset. They've started, they've founded, they're the CEO of a company or they're an entrepreneur inside of a company. So entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, CEOs, founders, excited to have startups up to 25 million in revenue and really just bring you the greatest stories possible around local small business to medium-sized business business owners. So excited to have today, uh, Mr. Michael Corbell, Corbell, right? Is it Michael Corbell? Corbell, like the champagne. Corbell, like champagne. All right. So uh, he started a brand and a business called the Invictus Mind. So I think you're going to have to stay tuned because there's a lot of great things to learn from. And especially in this type of economy, right now we're in the uh, pandemic world of 2020. But uh, I think a few years from now, or even just a few months from now, or a few weeks from now, uh, you'll learn a lot from Mr. Michael Corbell. So thanks, Mike, for uh, coming on the show. Thank you. No problem, John. I appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome, brother. So, hey, one thing that we like to start off with always is give a little bit about your background. You know, uh, I read a little bit about kind of the, the labor side of things that you came from in industry and then this light bulb that uh, switched on. At least that's what I Googled about you. Um, but share a little bit about kind of your background and, and how you landed into the entrepreneurial spirit side. Absolutely. Well, when I was younger, my dad used to call me uh, a renaissance man because I was always interested in so many different avenues that I, I couldn't focus on one thing. I'm always trying to uh, be Mr. Fixer or I'm interested in taking that opportunity or looking at that opportunity. And then I realized later in life that uh, maybe that was true, but then there's another phrase that says that you're the jack of all trades, but master of none. <laughs> so I'm not going to sit there and belittle myself saying I'm not a master of anything, but that I do have many interests. And I, I realized probably in my professional career that it just does not suit me to work for another individual. I'm, I'm pretty much unemployable. Uh, I mean, I'm, nice. a, I'm, a, I'm a good worker. I'll do the job. I, I can be relied on, but uh, I don't like to last and stick with one place very long. So I'm always, I always do different things. Well, I guess the, the question of some people may, may say, hey, uh, and I know you're married with, with a ch uh, one child, right? One daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, how does she deal with it? How does your wife deal with that? Uh, being able to be flexible and see your husband go through different dynamics and different things and different ideas. Give a little insight of that. Cause I think a lot of people could appreciate that side. Well, I, and I understand how some people, they value security and they, they value stability. And the only stability I can show my wife is that uh, I keep bringing money home from different places. Mm -hmm. So as long as the bills are paid, as long as our, our savings continues to go up, there's no financial stresses or anything like that. She's pretty much okay with it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, and you know what, you, you've you set that standard, right? I mean, you had a conversation with her, I'm sure. And, you know, she knew what you're what she was getting into. And, uh, and you knew that you had this spirit about you. So tell us a little bit about how the Invictus mind started. And where did that genesis come from? No problem. So the word Invictus is actually has a, a Greek background. Invictus means unconquerable. Mm. And the story for Invictus mind, it's, uh, it's about six years old. Uh, maybe a little longer, there was a movie by the same name, The Invictus, and uh, it was starring Morgan Freeman and Matt Damon. It's actually a story based about the, the, uh, the South African rugby team in the time of Nelson Mandela. And if we understand history, uh, Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for 27 years in South Africa, and then when he was released, he became president of that country. Well, the movie is talking about how Mandela uh, during his incarceration, he spent 27 years telling himself the same poem. This poem, Invictus, was actually written by, uh, I'm going to have to look over here for my, uh, I've got it hanging on a wall in my, in my studio here. It's, uh, it's by, written by, um, oh, I didn't even write down the guy's name. It was written in the 1890s. Yeah. And it's one of my favorite poems. And in the movie Invictus, Nelson Mandela's character told himself this over and over again because he said, no matter what they do to me, they can incarcerate me. They can beat me. They can punish me. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And he was telling mm. this to Matt Damon's character, whose job at the time was the, the he was the, the coach, the player coach of the South African rugby team. And in that movie, Nelson Mandela was using rugby to, uh, to really bring all the, you know, the people together. In that time in history, obviously, uh, we know that there was a, a lot of, uh, um, a lot of division, right, between uh, races, racial division. So they call it perestroika. They call it uh, things of that nature. Well, Invictus was a way to to 
motivate yourself no matter what happens. And so I started using that word Invictus and I read the poem and I was like, this is really, it applies to my life because I've had a lot of challenges in my life, but every challenge I've been able to overcome because of my mindset, because I know that nothing can keep me down. Nothing can hold me back from doing what I want to do. At the time when I heard that poem, I, I, I kind of adapted it. Uh, in my, I have a, a financial company that I'm running and uh, we, we get to name our teams. And so there's a, there's a group of people that, uh, that I work with and uh, I named our team Invictus. That was, that was the name of our team. Hmm. And so some people don't understand it. They don't like the word, but for me, it, it really, it, it does mean unconquerable. It means uh, nothing's going to hold me down. It doesn't matter what, uh, what you put in front of me, I'm going to get through it. And so I've always had that mindset. And within the last year, I've really decided that I'm going to take that brand, that word, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to brand myself with it. I'm going to make a podcast about it. And it's, mm. it's really been kind of adopted that way. Awesome. And, you know, you mentioned the financial services industry, uh, obviously as a, as a CEO, as a founder, um, you know, is that a franchise model? Did you start up your own agency? How does, how does your uh, financial services agency work? Well, it works like a franchise. It's not exactly a franchise. I, I don't buy a franchise license or anything like that. But hmm. a friend of mine about 10 years ago asked me to get involved. I actually had a, uh, a background in heating and air conditioning, but uh, I was kind of hmm. at my rope's end with that uh, industry. And I was looking to make a change. And he introduced me to the financial services company. And it was a company that was inside a company. In other words, I can own my own agency. I can recruit and build the team members I want. And I can actually get all the licenses and all the certifications to reach out to my own clients to sell and sit down with them. Or I can build an organization and have uh, a sales team, which is really the avenue I took. I built a small sales team with people who are, are going out and, and helping clients and who are uh, making a difference in their lives. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like, so when, when you were in the HVAC business, let's go track backtrack just a little bit to share with the audience you know, what kind of led you to break away? Was it a clean break all in uh, just with some savings and, and you kind of did it or did you get a loan? You know, how did you really start to develop that uh, agency? Well, I started on a part-time basis. Hmm. Uh, you know, I didn't have any college experience in, uh, in anything really. I, I went to trade school before I got into heating and air conditioning. And uh, uh, like I said, a friend of mine introduced me to the company and he basically told me, hey, you can start this on a part-time basis We'll show you the ropes. Come to our office. We have training classes. You can train to get your licenses. You can even go on a few appointments with me, and we'll we'll show you, you know, what we do for our clients. And at first, uh, I, I wasn't really interested in sitting down with clients. It was more about I just want to learn for my own self. I want to learn how to save money, how to how to prepare for emergencies, how to uh, take care of my retirement. But then, as I started learning more about how the company operates, he he told me, listen. You can take the route of being the, uh, the counselor yourself and sit down with clients, or you can put me in front of people. And if mm. you put me in front of people, then you really just, you're going to be splitting whatever. I, I've got 20 years in this industry. I've got sales experience. You know, you, you, you can tell people that you're just learning, but tell them I'm an expert. Tell them that uh, I have lots of experience and I'll take care of them. And so that's what I did when I got started. I literally would just uh, be talking to people when I was doing heating and air conditioning and I'm a very friendly, sociable guy. So I'd find out that they might be having a little problem with their budget or they might have a little problem with the retirement or, or insurance or something like that. And I said, hey, I've got a friend. He's got 20 years experience. I can introduce you to him. He'll help you out. You know, I'm just, I'm just really kind of learning the ropes. You don't want me to come back after I fix your furnace and pretend to be a financial advisor anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, there's that, that trust and credibility thing. So, uh, you know, I gained a trust of, of, of my friends, my, my contacts, and, and then my mentor, he was a credibility. So I talk him up and he would sit down and sometimes he would just run appointments, even if I wasn't there. So John, I would literally be on the roof of some building still in heating and air conditioning. And he would call me up and he said, Hey, Mike, you know, that family that you introduced me to, they, they bought such and such product. You, you just made $300 in that deal. Or he called me up again. Hey, you made $500 in that deal. Or, you know, maybe I made a, a smaller amount, maybe 50 bucks, but it kept adding up every time I'd give him somebody. And I was really intrigued by that. I said, really, all I got to do is put people in front of you. You'll do all the work and I'll get half of whatever is written up. So it was a no brainer for me. I just kept wow. doing that. 
until I got tired of heating and air conditioning. I said, you know what? I think I can actually do what he's doing. It doesn't seem to be that hard. Mm. <laughs> so I made a transition then. That's incredible. You know, and you know, there are a couple of nuggets there with having a mentor, uh, not having to leave your job uh, to become an entrepreneur, but kind of learn through the process. And then you really built up your confidence. And, and it seems like you've got the duly license and all the things that you needed to do. You set up your operations the right way. And it was purely referral based. So what was that transition like? And then how did you start marketing your business even more? Uh, what, let's go into those uh, couple parts there. How was the transition to, you mean- From the HVAC to going full-time? Well, I started making a lot of money, uh, almost matching what I was making in heating and air conditioning. Oh, wow. And I, I spent about 10 years in HVAC. And, uh, you know, in Chicago, it gets really cold in the winter and really hot in the summer. And no matter what the temperature was, I was always on a roof of some kind of building trying to fix somebody's equipment because they were too hot inside or too cold inside. And I had to face the elements. And I would just drive around the, the city of Chicago with my service van. And I really get, I just got burnt out. I got burnt out of climbing up and down a roof in a, in a weather and carrying a tool bag. And uh, at the time they had pagers. It was, this was before smartphones, right? So I had a pager and I think I'd be done for the day. And my pager would go off, beep, beep, beep. You got to go on another service call. So I was asking myself, why am I, why am I still doing this? I'm making good money just referring people to, to, to my mentor, why am I still doing heating and air conditioning? So mm. I started making a transition. I started going on more appointments. I started uh, learning the ropes uh, from the ground up. In, in the first couple, I don't know, 10 or 20 probably appointments I ran by myself, I it was a struggle. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I felt like I was an imposter. You might've heard this phrase called the imposter syndrome. syndrome. Right? Yep. <laughs> but you know, I just, I would go back to the office and I would review what I did with my mentor. I said, hey, you know, this is what I said. This is what I asked. But it was really nice because the company was really formatted. So really, the the consultation was all I had to do is read it. I had a, you know I had a piece of paper in front of me. Ask these questions, write them down, go back to a computer, type them in the computer, and the computer will spit you out what you need to tell them. So it was very formatted, it's very systematized. So it wasn't really that hard. Um, but it is a transition. It's a transition from going to an employee mindset to more of a an entrepreneur mindset. So, you know, you used to have a little ball and chain called a beeper uh, back in the days and, and told you what to do, when to do it, where to go. So tell us about that mindset, you know, people listening right now, how could they start to develop themselves into, did you have a calendar? Did you become a Franklin Covey type person? What did you do to start control your time instead of having a beeper tell you what to do? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Um... Discipline is something that I think everybody needs to work on, right? And time management. So I've learned some time management skills. Um, I, uh, I had a calendar I used to use. I don't know if it was Frank and Clevy. It was something I bought at the store. And then everything went to, uh, to different technologies. So when the smartphones came in, you know, I started using the Google calendar, right? And I'd have a color code system as to what type of appointment I want to go on. And I would just look at my calendar and it would be green or red or blue, whatever different colors were to let me know, okay, I've got this kind of appointment. I got this type of appointment, but I would literally block out if I was still doing HVAC at the time, I would block out, okay, I got 10 hours. I need to block out for, for this job. And then all my appointments would be run in the evening. Hmm. When I first got started, I, I wasn't married. So it was a lot easier to, to balance everything. Right? I go to work and then I go to my, my side gig afterwards. You know, once you start having a family, then, then becomes uh even more necessary to, to schedule everything that you're doing. Yeah. I have a strict calendar, you know, and, and you know, those people thinking like, Hey, you know, they, they need to go cold Turkey or they need to make a big investment. it seems like you really found something that you enjoyed. It was starting to, you know, realize in your mind and crystallize, wow, I could really do something, especially when you were just referring and making 300 bucks, probably more, more hourly. If you think about it, cause you didn't spend the hour with the client, you just referred it. Uh, than you were making an HVAC. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So now you're, you're starting to transition. You're starting to calendarize yourself and, and get some good tools. What are two or three things that you started to do that really made a difference to start to really make significant money and start to get consistency on your uh, cash flow? Well, um, there are a number of techniques that I used. Uh, 
And again, a lot of the company that uh, I started working with, they, they, they trained me with, with their system to show somebody how to make that transition. Mm. So we had a, what we call a business format system. And it, it was like a, a little manual that had all the different techniques for that. But uh, one of the skills I learned is how to break your day into what they call mini days, right? So we had a, a 24 hour period of time, right? It can't be working for 24 hours. You got to factor in whether you have a day job, whether you have family time or, or sleep and eat and everything like that. But uh, if you broke up the 24 hour period of time into uh, three blocks of eight hours, then you know, okay, well, eight hours, I'm going to be sleeping, right? The other eight hours is just going to be regular living activities, right? Visiting with family or eating and thing. But then I have eight hours of time that I could actually dedicate to writing in appointments or, or filling this time slot that way. Um, it really helped me because most people's tendency is, you know, they get, if, especially if they're making a transition from a full-time job to a business, they come home from work and all day long, as soon as they sit on the couch, that's it. They're done for the rest of the night. Right. The TV goes on. Maybe the sports game comes on or your favorite TV show. So uh, I've, I told myself a long time ago that I'm not going to be watching TV. Right. I, you know, TV just doesn't interest me. I don't I don't have a favorite show. Maybe after my eight hours of, of business time. Right. Uh, you know, when I'm winding down 1130, 12 o'clock at night, I might watch a show or two on Netflix. Um, but it's really just about breaking up. OK, I've got to focus these eight hours on this activity, these eight hours on that activity and then everything else in between. I love it. I love it. You know, and that's, you know, seriously talking about uh, a transition of mindset of just being an employee and knowing like, hey, this beeper is going to tell me what to do to uh, adjusting yourself and committing as many hours as you were doing for someone else in their HVAC business to now your own financial business and, and learning and becoming a, a, a more of an expert in that. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you started doing to uh, to not just be the only person in your business, because from what I hear, you scaled a bit. So what have you done to put um, some scalability to your business as far as, you know, people that you bring in? Have you started to, over the years, you know, start to build a team? Tell us a little bit about that. That's a good question. So there is a saying, a quote uh, by the name of uh, John Paul Getty, I think is the guy who wrote it. He said, I'd rather have 1% of 100 people's efforts than 100% of my own efforts. Mm. So what I realized is that I can't be a one man show and do everything I want to do. So I, I needed to get a team. I needed to, I needed to recruit and hire and train people that I can leverage their time as opposed to me doing everything. And so that's what I really did. I focused on finding people who have a similar mindset, who have that entrepreneur bug, if you would. So uh, many people were kind of like me. They were in a job that they didn't really care for. They, they, they wanted to get out of it. And, and I showed them a, I showed them a path. I said, listen, this may not be right for you, but this is what worked for me. It made some money, good, good money on a part-time basis. Uh, you know, check it out. And we would have, we would have um, presentations at our office about the plan, about how it worked. Right. So I, I, I go out and meet people, whether I'm going to the store and I talk to the cashier at, at, at Jewel, or if, uh, you know, I, even when I was doing heating and air conditioning, I might be talking to the property manage, uh, manager, the maintenance guy, something like that, and just get to know him a little bit. Say, hey, how would you like to make some extra money? You know, this is what I did. You can kind of learn this from the ground up. And I would put in place two, three, four, up to five people at one time. And they would go through the training program just like I did. Hmm. By the time that they were actually sufficient themselves, now they understood, hey, I can go out there and make some money. They made their own whatever they did, or they referred it to me just like I did, right? They started part-time and I started splitting business with them. But at the time uh, I realized, Hey, if you get a team of people now, now you actually have a business, right? There's a difference between being self-employed and it being a business owner, right? If you're self-employed and you go on vacation, you're not making any money. But if mm -hmm. you have a business, if you have people working for you or with you, then you can go on vacation and, and that business is still generating revenue. I love it. You know, and, and you're talking about uh, the Kiyosaki, right? Uh, those of you that have read Cash Flow Quadrants and, you know, that trading hours for dollars as an employee, uh, what Michael just talked about with self-employed, but uh, you break your hand or go on vacation and you're not available, uh, you could be stopping, you know, your cash flow. But business owner, boy, that starts to be fun. So, so what were some things that did you have to develop some of the systems? Uh, were you uh, still working with your mentor at that time to uh, kind of copy what they did and, and then, you know, create your own Invictus mind behind it. What were some things that you did? 
Well, the Invictus Mind is my podcast. That's kind of my own uh, bread and butter. So I don't have any mentor per se on that. But for the financial, okay. the financial team that I call Invictus, I, I have a very good relationship with my mentor. Him and I are really good friends. And uh, I think that whenever you have an opportunity to have a mentor-mentee relationship, the more coachable a person is to that relationship. In other words, if you're being taught something because that person you put your faith and your trust in, and they have that credibility because they have been successful. They've, they've walked that path before you have. I think the better that you follow their actions, the more success you will have. Mm. You know, they, they, they teach us in school that, you know, it's incorrect and it's wrong to cheat on somebody or cheat with somebody. Uh, you know what I'm saying? When, when you're trying to get grades in school. But I think in a business world, you want to find somebody that you can, you can copy off of, right? You, you, you want to find out what they did and, and do what they did, right? Because success leaves clues. And so, yeah, I have a personal mentor and then I have a team of mentors that I, I listen to. And of course, every single individual has different contacts, a different network, uh, has a different style. So I had to adapt some of that stuff on my own, but the basic foundation of my actions and my, my daily habits were, were, were copied off of somebody else who, who showed me those ropes. That's great stuff, you know. So how did you also then start to develop a, a good marketing strategy? Are you using uh, SEO for, you know, web type stuff? Are you uh, just because you've built out all these clients through referrals initially and then you doing them, are you just mostly, mostly a, a referral-based business within your own clientele? What are some strategies that you could share with the Go for SEO community? Um, well, I guess I'm, I'm going to have to clarify the question. Sure. Because 2020 is a little bit different, uh, modus operandi for myself than it has been in years past. I've kind of scaled back my financial services this year and started taking new uh, avenues. Okay. So right now I still have a referral type of business, but mainly it's, it's if I find somebody who needs to sit down with somebody, I'll refer them to somebody else in the office who's an expert. I, I don't really, I don't take the approach of being the, the expert anymore. Uh, it's more of a referral basis for me. Okay, uh, but that's what I use my podcast for. I use social media, uh, and unfortunately, because of the COVID lockdowns, I haven't really gotten out of the house a whole lot um, to meet people face to face. So that's why I'm kind of taking this year to to transition some of my approach. But uh, I think really just to find people, um, you can't teach somebody who's an introvert how to be an extrovert, right? It doesn't mm. personality thing. But you can teach people how to be a little bit more comfortable in one-on-one -on -one situations. How to, how to say hi. I mean, the simple things like just saying hi to people, smiling, right? Making eye contact. Most of the time, those will generate some kind of conversation, right? And so maybe that's just my nature. I've always been very personable. I can always just go up to somebody. Um, but then, you know, there's tons of things you can do on social media. I, I wouldn't say I have SEO as far as like a website. I do have a website mm -hmm. that I, I put my podcast on. But that's a whole different animal right there. So neat. So you kind of inferred a little bit. You, you've you built your financial business enough to a point that you still have the referral basis. You've got your clients. You know, if you meet people that need the service, it's great. But you've, you've pivoted a little bit. So tell us a little bit of some of the other revenue streams that now you've started to build up. So I, uh, I took the year in 2020 to, to really learn more about internet and website marketing and um, I guess digital marketing would be the, the correct term for it. Uh, the reason for that is just because I think the economy is generally shifting and everything is going digital nowadays. Mm. And so you have to ask me the question again. I, I, I'm sorry. I forgot what you're. No, no, no. It's all right. Just, uh, just how you've been able to tr transition, right? Somebody in this type of realm of entrepreneurship, you, you left the job. You got into an industry called the financial services industry. You built something out. That's awesome. But now you've been able to pivot and you're, maybe your interests are, are like, hey, I could still have my financial industry and people know me for that. Yeah. My clients know me and, and people that are in my team know me. But I've built a little bit of a team. I've built a little bit of a, of a good momentum there. When I, when, what I asked was, how, what are some other things that you're pivoting to okay. uh, from your podcast to some other gig type things that you, you've developed for yourself? Yeah, so I uh, I had an interest in doing a podcast. Uh, this was something that I had an interest in from a long time ago. And when I was doing sales calls, I would actually, in my car, I would just listen to podcasts, different types mm -hmm. of uh, speakers. And so I started thinking, okay, I think I could do that. I think I could actually get into podcasting. I think I could actually 
have my opinions and my message sent out into the world. So I started uh, learning a lot about how podcasters actually work, learning about the equipment you needed, learning how to actually put together something that makes sense, learning how to interview people. And along the way, I picked up some strategies about uh, what they call affiliate marketing. Mm. Affiliate marketing is when somebody else has a product or a service and, and you really just you talk about that product or that service on your podcast or, or you, you put it on your social media channel or you, know, you can build a website or an email uh, what they call a marketing funnel around it, right? And then all you're doing is you're saying, okay, well, here's the product that I like, I recommend, I use. You would tell them to people on the podcast or on the website. And if they decide to become a client, then the company that you're affiliated with will, will pay you a revenue stream off of that. So I've been able mm-hmm. to find a couple of companies that I like to work with that uh, you know will throw me a couple of dollars just for selling their products. And what was some of the vetting out strategies? Uh, obviously, uh, you don't want to put yourself in, in a situation where you built this brand and all of a sudden you promote the wrong thing and it's not the best quality. What are some strategies that you use to make sure that the, the program not only pays you, but you know, you, you're feeling comfortable with promoting that product? Well, so two of the companies that I use right now, um, one, I'll just say that the name of it is Tuttle Twins. Mm-hmm. The Tuttle Twins is a book series that, uh, that I, I give to my, my daughters, a children's book series. Oh. And uh, it's based on economics and, and political ideologies. And the books were actually retranslated or, or re, re, repositioned from books that are already out there. Like, for example, uh, if you've ever heard of Ayn Rand uh, and her book, mm-hmm. Atlas Shrugged, that's a long book, right? You're not going to get – my daughter's not going to read a 1,200-page book, right? <laughs> but this author has actually made that book, the concepts taught in that book, into a children's book. And there's oh, like wow. – there's like 10 or 12 different books. Uh, there's one by Ron Paul that was translated. There's Ayn Rand. There's uh, Economics and One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. I'm kind of an economics uh, political geek, as it were. So I started checking those books out, and I read them with my daughter. And then I had a chance to actually interview the author on one of my podcasts. So I know his credibility. We actually share the same faith, but I, I like, I like his, mind, his mindset, his ideology, and, uh, and the content he delivers. So now I'll talk about the Tuttle Twins a lot. Uh, and, and obviously, as their company grows and I'm just promoting it myself, I'm getting a little bit of revenue stream, right? Uh, another one I use is um, I discovered this substance known as Kratom, which is actually an evergreen tree. It's like, a, it's like it's a part of the coffee family or tea family, but it, it's supposed to reduce anxiety. It's supposed to calm you down a little bit. Uh, as entrepreneurs, sometimes we can get all crazy in, in life and every which way. So, you know, I'd rather just, uh, you know, come back home, drink some of the Kratom, like a relaxing tea. And uh, it also, that, that substance also is good for uh, if people want to overcome addictions or anything like that. Not saying I have an addiction or anything, but it's a good, it's a good natural substance. And so I actually had the gentleman who runs that company on my podcast. I talked to him a little bit. And so now, uh, if you download any of my podcast episodes, there'll be a link there. You can say, okay, I'm interested in Tuttle Twins, or I'm interested in this Kratom that you're talking about. And just things like that. So usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll find the product that I like that I'm using, and I'll just talk about it. Uh, you know, if, if people have been listening to me or following me for a while, you'll, you'll build up a trust. You'll build up uh, some kind of affinity, right? And so people like me and, and trust me, even though I've never heard from them personally, right? You'll find this, John, as you're doing a podcast, you have a certain audience who's going to tune in every single week to listen to what you have to offer. Well, in their mind, they're building up a relationship with you, even if you don't know them. So sure. they're going to start to trust you. They're going to start to listen to you. And, and, and that affinity level is going to go up. So now if they trust me, they like me, they tune into me every single week, I can pitch whatever product I'm looking at and say, hey, here's something that I like that I use. Check it out. I love I, that. I won't use a product that uh, I don't believe in. Right? Mm. No, yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're putting your, your brand on there yourself. Uh, and then attaching it to that. So that's pretty awesome. You know, so you really started to, if you listen here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, what is, what has Michael really done? He's set up a hub, which is himself. Uh, he's got his Invictus mindset. Uh, you know, he started to develop himself while he was working and he started thinking to himself, well, then a friend comes around, says, Hey, here's this opportunity. <clears> how <throat> you can make a little bit extra money. It actually becomes significant enough that is a replacement of his current job. Then he gets it to that point where it's kind of running, you know, or running by itself. 
it's got a system behind it. You heard Michael say, you know, all these things, these strategies and things are already built in. He's not needing to recreate anything. He followed a system. And now he's also venturing into other things that he has a passion for. So pretty awesome stuff. I, I love it. I love it. So one of the things that, uh, you know, the go for CEO mindset, at least on the entrepreneurial side, and um, we're developing one for the entrepreneur side, but uh, the C for CEO and entrepreneur or for go for CEO, sorry, is client experience. Tell us a little bit about, as we end this uh, interview here, uh, what is the differentiating factor for the Invictus Mind uh, entrepreneur or sole proprietor yourself, um, the difference of client experience and everything that you're doing? The different in client experience. Um, <laughs> I wish I had a list of testimonials I can give you. Mike is awesome. He's helped me out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I would say that uh, if you always focus on doing the right thing for okay. your clients, they're going to stick with you. I, I think that in the financial industry, and I, I, again, I, I can probably talk another hour about my, my thoughts about the financial industry, right? There's a lot of skepticism that uh, for good reason people would have about that industry. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I really, I really believe in the company that I work with, that I'm, I'm affiliated with. And I think that my advice to people in the industry is instead of looking at dollars and cents, look at people and try to solve their problems. Right. Because a lot of times what I've seen is people will go out there and say, well, if I sell this product to somebody, you know, I'll make 500 bucks or I'll make a thousand dollars. Right. And they're seeing the dollar, they're seeing their commission rather than trying to solve the problem. They say mm -hmm. the client, the client that pays is the client that stays. Right. And so I have the privilege of being able to find the best program for my clients that, you know, I work in what they call a, uh, an independent agency. It's not cat. It's not a captive agency. So okay. I have, a, I have almost anything that the industry has to offer and I can match up the exact program that my client needs that nobody else can come and replace it because I've already given them the best that there is. Right. But then I, I'm, I'm client centric, right? I'm not commission centric. So I want to focus on what it is that they're looking at. Uh, particularly if it's something about debt or if it's something about uh, just budgeting. I show them how to, how to find another 50, 100, maybe $200 in their budget every single month. Now they can take some of that money and put it in a savings program. Now they can take some of that money and maybe get an insurance program or they can pay down some of their debt. And those strategies don't often pay me, but they're going to remember, hey, Mike was the guy who showed me how to get out of debt. Mike was the guy who showed me how to find an extra 200 bucks. Mike was the guy who said, hey, you don't have to keep doing the same thing you're doing over and over again and expecting different results, right? The definition of insanity. So for me, it's just satisfaction. I've, I've gone in there and I've solved a problem. And I think, I think that is the secret to any entrepreneurial venture, right? Are you solving a problem or are you in it only for the money? I love it. That is a, a very, very true statement. And I hope people caught that. Uh, you know, uh, I think we have a mutual friend uh, that says things are caught, not taught. Right. So um but hey, uh, also the next one is for the E is employee engagement. And I know that you don't necessarily have specific employees unless I missed something here in the interview, maybe some uh, virtual assistants or what have you, or even the wife that probably helps uh, in the business. But um, employee engagement could be also independent contractors, people that work with you, people that want to do business with you. What's your differentiating uh, value proposition to those people and why they should do business with you and the Invictus Mind? Well, I'm going to have to separate again the Invictus Mind podcast because I'm not, I don't necessarily have a product that I'm, I'm offering to my podcast. Okay. Uh, obviously, I, I'm building a brand and, and the product's going to come uh, down the road. I have to look into some of the compliance and regulations when it comes to offering my experience uh, over a podcast as opposed to separating the podcast from my financial company. Um, so I don't have any employees, although that's probably the next thing I'm going to look at in 2021 for, for the podcast because just trying to do a website, trying to do social media, trying to edit a, a video and a, an audio, it, it, it takes a lot of work. So it is, a, is it a time burden? For the, the uh, financial company, I don't have any employees either. Uh, everyone that I work with, I might have recruited them onto my team and under my agency, but they're 1099, oh. which, means that, which means that they're independent contractors which I think in today's world is probably the best way to go, right? We don't have any kind of contract where you need to, uh, I need to pay them a certain dollar per hour. And then you got people worrying about minimum wage laws and raising minimum wage and paying them an extra dollar an hour every year. Uh, all the, all the stuff that comes with that. So it's really just 
I'm going to work with you. I'm going to enter into a mentor mentee relationship, but you're going to be independent. You don't have to listen to me, but I'm not going to try to hurt you because ultimately whatever you do will also benefit me. So my job will just really be to coach them, to mentor them, to show them the things that I've done in the past, the mistakes I've made, the, um, the success principles that I've learned and say, Hey, why don't you take, try doing this, see if it works. And if it does great, then, you know, it's your business. Keep running with it. Uh, so it, it really, it really makes it uh, an easy relationship. I'm not a, I'm not anyone's boss. I don't have to, I don't have to tell them they're late for work or anything like that. It's like what they do is the results are going to be based on what they do. Oh, what an awesome structure too. I mean, that, that uh, really alleviates some of the hassles of starting a business and having to the legalities of all these things. Uh, that's pretty cool. So that, that leads us right into the O, which is operational excellence. And you've shared a little bit of the calendar style and some of the things that you've done, but what do you think is your differentiator then uh, with everything that you're doing in, in your operations? I have to write down what I'm going to do for the day, the, the night before. Hmm. I, I can be easily distracted sure. because I, yeah, exactly. Uh, because I have so many interests, right? I started this saying that, you know, I, I can't hold a job because I have so many different interests, right? So I, I hop from place to place to place. So what I'll do for planning is, I'll, okay, I'll, I have a whiteboard in front of me with everything I need to see. Obviously, you can't see it. Excuse me. But I'll have, okay, uh, different bullet points. I need to get this done. I need to get this done. I need to get that done. And so I'll always have a, a calendar or a goal sheet in front of me. Uh, so I can focus on something. There are times when I accomplish all my tasks and I'm like, I don't know what to do now. What's the next thing I need to go after, right? But I find that uh, trying to come up with a, a, a morning routine or a, a ritual that you do every single day is habits, right? Uh, one of the things I said before is uh, success leaves clues. And the clues that I've picked up along the way is you need to have good habits. If you have good habits, if you keep repetitively doing something over and over again and, and working towards a specific outcome, then those habits become second nature to you. And it, it just, it helps you with your success. I love it. So you really wrapped up, you know, client experience, employee engagement, in your case, independent contractors that work with you and, and the operational side. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, our goal is to meet with you in about six months, continue this journey and hopefully see not only the Invictus group on the financial side, but the Invictus mindset uh, podcast, uh, and really just the Invictus uh, challenging, you know, mindset, the things that you've been able to create over the next three, four, five, 10 years is going to be pretty awesome to see. And, you know, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, any last words that you want to leave uh, the audience with, Mike? I would say don't ever give up. One of the things that I really don't like in this world is this victim mentality. Hmm. And I can get into a whole other conversation about how that goes, but most people, they, especially in America, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense because we, we were born into what has been considered the freest country in the world. Although in today's day and age, that's questionable, right? Yeah. But we have, we have unlimited opportunity here. And as far as technology goes, that's why I transition into podcasting and website and everything, because that's the world that we're going into. It's a technological era. And so there is literally unlimited opportunity, but the opportunity is in between your two ears, right? And so when people say that, you know, I don't make so much per hour, I'm a victim, right? Or if I, I have this job I hate, I'm a victim. Or I have a wife and family that I don't like, I'm a victim. Or the government did something to me, I'm a victim, right? It's like, well, that, that's nonsense to me. If you really want to do something, you can do it here. I mean, there are people making money trading baseball cards online. Yeah. I mean, literally, if you want to do it, you can do it. And as far as finding a mentor, there's lots of them out there. Uh, I mean, I've been lucky enough to find online mentors, podcasts I listen to, websites. Sometimes I get emails from people that, you know, I, I might have liked something that he put on Facebook. I sign up for it, and all of a sudden I have emails. And a lot of people think that's junk mail, but it's, I just read and I, I always try to keep that mindset open. That I'm not going to give up. If this, I want to do something, it might take a while to do, but I'm going to set myself on a path towards that because I don't, I don't have excuses. I, I'm not a victim. I, I don't make excuses. I don't care what the government does, what a boss does, what, what the, the economy looks like. I, I, I just don't buy any of that stuff. I'd say, this is my life. I want to design it. I'm going to go for it. And there's no excuses. 
driven by mindset. I love it. That's uh, one of the monikers of the Go for CEO channel. And boy, what a, what a way to end the podcast. So Mike, I really appreciate your time. Tell the audience just to, you know, where to reach you, you know, uh, I don't know if Instagram or uh, audio channels, what, what are some ways that they can connect with you uh, on other social medias? Absolutely. So my podcast is called the Invictus Mind. You can find that on all your major podcatchers. I'm on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, CastBox. I'm going to try to get in a couple more of those uh, as I'm made aware of more of those. Uh, you can find me on almost every social media channel. I have a Facebook group called the Invictus Mind. Um, but I'm also like, I'm on minds.com. I'm on parlor. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Usually it's just Mike Corbell or, or some variation of that MW Corbell, MW Corbell one, something like that. Um, yeah, I have a website. It's the Invictus mind.com. There's a, read a recommended reading list there. And there is, a, that's the hosting platform for all my podcasts. I don't have a whole lot of other things um, on that website, but I am working on sending out a newsletter regarding information about uh, uh, entrepreneurship, some of the affiliates I work with, just some uh, business ideas. I talk a lot about uh, independence, liberty, and self-development. So mm -hmm. I have a, a text marketing campaign. So you can just in, uh, text the word Invictus I N V I C T U S. If you text that word to the number three, three, seven, 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 I'll get you on my email list and then I'll just uh, send you content uh, that way too. Oh, wow. That's a, that's an awesome tool. I may have to hit you up and learn about that. So <laughs> neat, neat. Well, Hey, thanks so much again. You know, I really appreciate you coming on and uh, certainly been a, a value add for the go for CEO channel. So we'll tune in with you in about six to 12 months. Want to see the journey and the growth that you've been able to. So this is a challenge to you. Uh, certainly in six to 12 months, we want to hear about what is new with the Invictus Group, the Invictus Podcast, and the guy, Michael Corbell. Thank you so much. Thank you, John.